You want to create Hollywood level Spider-Man VFX at home on your PC? This is now possible and this is what we are going to see in this video. I will show you how to create a muscle simulation under a closed simulation using Blender and Marvel's Designer. We first need to get a Spider-Man model that is compatible with this workflow. I am talking about a model with clean UV. This is the most important thing for this workflow because the UV of the model will be used as a working basis in Marvel's Designer. Ideally, we want a UDM format for more precision. If it is not, just make sure that your UV are all clean and separated, and not superimposed on one another. Me, I will use the model of Brave GVFX that I highly recommend because it is very faithful to the film and I can be obtained with our result muscle simulation according to your preference. And I have a great news, the creator of this model has agreed to support this video by offering the first 25 people to use the code tutorial TASM-20 a 20% discount on the purchase of this replica of the amazing Spider-Man 2 suit. So go for it because this is the model we are going to use in this tutorial. Huge shout out and thanks to Brave GVFX for its participation and do not hesitate to give him strength and support. All his links are in the description. On my model, I noticed that the UV are superimposed. It is normal, this corresponds to the red and blue color of the suit, which have separate textures. To fix this problem, make a duplicate of the mesh, then go into edit mode on it. In the shading tab, click on select the vertex group corresponding to the blue part, then in the UV editor, move them precisely by one unit by pressing G, then Y, then 1. As you can see, your UV are now clean and separated. Then, with this copy of my model selected, I go to export, then I export in OBJ. Rename it as you want, for me it will be Garment Base. Then, in the export parameter, we select Selected Only. No further adjustment is necessary, we export. Then we can delete the copy of the mesh that we just made and then export the original this time in FPX. When you export from Blender to Marvelous, always make sure that the size of the mesh and your rigs are indeed normalized to one. Otherwise, you will encounter a lot of error. In Marvelous Designer, we come in Import Add and not just Import. Then in OBJ to Garment. Note that I use an older version of Marvelous so some setting and interface may change. Then we check Trace 2D pattern from the UV map. This step is very important, otherwise you will end up with a single large piece of fabric impossible to simulate properly. Once the computer has finished calculating, we get this result. If any part of the suit appears darker, you just right click on it and select Flip Normal. If you start the simulation now, you realize that the simulation works, but that the parts are not all stitched together. Type Ctrl plus Z to reset the simulation to its basic state and do not forget to save your project. We now import the model in FBX version that will act as a support model to adjust the suit on top. Do not forget to uncheck this option unless you want your suit to teleport randomly when importing. So the garments aren't in the right spots, so select them all and replace them on the mannequin by hand. This doesn't have to be perfect. Switch from textured surface to random color for a better view. Now you will have to sew between them the flying part. So we press N to go into sewing mode and from there it's up to you. Use GPU simulation for faster playback to adjust more easily. You will have to sew part, run the simulation, see what it's missing, come back with Ctrl plus Z, then sew again, etc, etc until everything is sewn. Not that the N key put us in the segment sewing mode right here, but if you want to sew freely, use the M key to place your seam where you want. If you miss and want to remove a seam, use the B key to switch to seam editing. The sewing process takes a long time, but it's very important, so don't rush it. With this model, the segment sewing mode doesn't work that much, because there is some extra segments onto each garment, especially where fabric pieces cross each other. So check every sew. Use the F key to focus the viewport where you just clicked. Do not hesitate to move garment part to see better. Feel free to delete some existing suit. Here, you should use mostly the free sewing tool. If you don't know where to stop a suit, don't panic. Marvelous helped you with this little blue dot. When it's all done, switch the simulation mode from fast to normal. This will slow down your viewport, but it's normal, the simulation is now more stable. To better fit the glove, select all the five finger garments, then in the property, bring down the distance between particles from 20 to 5. This will give extra polygon to the simulation just for the finger area. 
give the glove a value of 10. Then again, take time to sew the finger to the glove by removing old messy sew and clean everything. Repeat the process for the other end. In the setting with the glove selected, reduce the pressure value to minus 70. Then the two shrinkage value to 20. Now select again the five finger and set the pressure value at minus 70 again. Now the shrinkage value had to be set to 20. As you can see, now the glove fit nicely, but we can do better. Use the tool tack on avatar to drag the figure in between right to the mesh by clicking first on the garment, then onto the mesh. I also had a tack at the bottom of the palm of the hand to drag the glove even more. No hit play, and as you can see, the glove fit perfectly. Repeat the process for the other hand. To adjust the mask, select first every piece of the mask. Then drop down the distance between particles to 15. Now adjust the mask by hand. And again, use the tack on avatar tool to pin the high shape onto the right position. And last step, that is not the most fun one, we go into the UV editor and we'll have to place the UV to match the UV from Blender. It is important to be able to use the same texture as the base mesh. First, separate every UV and make two different groups by color. Now make group corresponding to the UV in Blender, try to position them in Marvelous approximately where they are in Blender. Back in Blender, add a new plane. Rotate it by 90 degrees along Y axis, then add an array modifier. Extend the repeat to 5. Click on Object Convert to Mesh. In Edit Mode, hit U and Project from View while facing the plane. Now export it as an OBJ. I named it UV Support. In Marvelous, add the plane as a garment. Don't forget to check the Trace 2D pattern from UV Map. Hit OK. Now you got a big useless plane in your scene. In Blender, expand the UV editor window. Make sure that all your UV are framed, then make a quick capture. Save and name it. In Marvelous, in the texture setting under texture, import the capture you just made. Now, scale up and replace the texture with the Edit Texture tool. Place the first style name 1001 in the left corner and match the height of the texture to the square. Now, in the UV editor, move your new plane one tile above the origin. Make it fit by scaling and moving it. Try to match the height as close as possible using the line of the capture visible on your texture. Now it's just a matter of overlay your UV onto the reference to see if the scale is right. Place them on top of the reference, they will disappear because they are under the big UV reference square, but it's not an issue, we will fix this later. I advise you to scale similar UV parts together to avoid scale difference between UV. Now repeat for the blue, switch to blue texture in Blender, take a capture, import it. Resize the texture again, trying to match closely what you've done previously. And then the same process for the blue part. Scale, match and place the UV on top. For the missing UV at the end, move the square to the next corner. Then, in Simulation tab, move the texture to fit the tile name 1006 to the right corner of the square. And you can now finish the process. When it's done, we can select everything and move it by one tile to the origin, using the corner as guide. 
make sure to match the height again. We can now delete the big useless square and your UV are now down. The most time consuming part of the process is now finished. Thanks to the creator of this add-on who agreed to give you the discount code XTutorial20. This discount code gives you an access to minus 20% for the purchase of the Xmotion add-on. The code is now active, so go get this incredible add-on with unlimited possibility now. Huge thanks to the creator k 44 Dev Studio. all his links are in the description, so go give him support. We are now back in Blender to set up the muscle with the Xmotion add-on. If you decide to use the Brave GFX Creator template, the muscles are already set up for you, but here I will resume from zero to show you the process. We are going to edit a mesh with only armature modifier and nothing else. I bring the rig to the front by checking the box in front. Then I go into pause mod with Ctrl plus shift. In the add-on panel, I switch to auto high mod. In muscle name, I will name my muscle pectoral. And I also pay attention that the suffix correspond to the part of the body on which I find myself, to know the left part here. Then to create the pectoral muscle, I can select the true bone on which it should logically be attached. So I will select this bone, then this bone at the shoulder. Make sure that the bones selected are indeed bone with the option deform enable. I then click on add basic muscle. You can now see that a muscle has been created between the two selected bones and that the X muscle collection is automatically created with the correct name of the muscle and the correct suffix. I will then move the base of the muscle to place it at the torso level. Then I test the rig to see if the muscle is well parented. Now I will come to deform the muscle, either in sculpt mode or in edit mode with proportional editing enabled. Me, I'm going to use the sculpt mode with G for grab. I also use I for inflate to make it bigger. Once our muscle is sculpted, we go down to add-on panel, then we click on X mirror muscle. A mirror copy of the muscle has just been created, also parented to the rig. This function is a considerable time saver. I now select my two muscles, then the mesh on which we want to apply them. You can see open up here, and here I click on apply muscle to body. It takes a few seconds, and we can now see in the modifier part of the mesh that both string wrap are automatically applied. I now check the skin corrector option, and apply again. As you can see, a corrective smoothness is applied in the modifier. Let's see the vertex group now. We can see that one for each muscle was automatically created. By the way, these two groups are identical copy. In some situations, identical vertex groups are not an issue, as in our case, or everything works properly. But sometimes, if it doesn't work, do not hesitate to come and rework them directly. It is now done to the process. You will therefore have to repeat this operation for each desired muscle. I advise you to use anatomy image in reference to help you speed up the process. For the animation part, I will not go into detail because this is not an animation tutorial. Keep in mind that for your close simulation to work, your character must be in rest pose at the beginning of the animation. So I advise you to start your animation at the frame 10 or 20 to avoid any error. Your animation should transition smoothly from the rest pose to your animation. Now in the stop body tab, hide the simulation on out of the frame muscle that do not need to be calculated. Select one random muscle and then in the bake tab click on bake all dynamic. This will bake the simulation of all muscle at once. Now we will be able to see the behavior of each muscle and individually adjust its parameter of jiggle, stiffness, etc. Then re-simulate it individually by removing its bake then recalculating it until you get a nice result. Once the bake is finalized, you can hide the collection containing the muscle and then select only the Spider-Man mesh. We then click on export and export in Alembic. Note that the Alembic format exports your entire timeline, so it is important to set the number of frames in your timeline right. In the export parameter, we check selected object. Then change the use setting for box from render to viewport. In Marvelous, we come to remove the mannequin inside our costume, then we import our animation in Alambic. All the icon avatar should update automatically, but sometimes if you import a mesh with a different name, it can become a mess, so in this case, just delete all the tag and redo the process.
we run the simulation quickly to fit the suit on the mannequin. Then we go to the animation tab and start baking the animation by clicking on the camera icon. Once finalized, we export in Alambic Ogawa. You can uncheck the export avatar setting. I import the Alambic into Blender and then make a copy of the following object. Webbing, soul, lens, back spider, shutter button, spider layer, web shooter and frame. Place all of the copy in another collection in order to keep the original so as not to destroy them. Then we use a shrink wrap modifier on the webbing to transfer it on the mesh cache. I change the wrapping method to target normal project, it gives a better result. We now add a surface deform modifier on the webbing with as target the mesh cache and click bind to fix it. If you press play, you will now notice the webbing follows the simulation. We only have to bind all the elements we previously copied to the mesh cache by changing the target of each surface deform modifier on each object, then then clicking bind. We then add the red material to the mesh cache. It is now necessary to separate the blue part from the red. It is very easy. In edit mode, just place your cursor over the blue part and press L. The whole part is now selected automatically. Once all the blue parts are selected, we add a new slot of texture in the shading tab. Click on assign, then we add the blue texture material on this slot. And here it's finished, your simulation is set up. Definitely take good care to save your projects. For all your future animation, the process is now simple. First animate a light version of the model without the muscle. Then once happy with the animation, simulate the muscle individually. Once satisfied with the muscle simulation, export in Alambic the mesh deformed by the muscle. Import it into Marvelous, then simulate the suit on top. Then, very important, do not delete your mesh cache in Blender. Keep the very first on which all details are pinned. And just change the cache in the modifier tab by the new simulation you just exported. The mesh cache update automatically without you having to risk your webbing and all other detail. And you guy now got the power of Hollywood in the palm of your hand. Congrats. I hope this tutorial has been useful to you, feel free to like and share to support me. I developed this workflow as a part of my personal project in the universe of The Amazing Spider-Man 2, which will be released this year. I can't wait to show you more. Bye.